Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be rebuilding the complete disc brake on a 4x4 truck. This truck here is a 1990 Ford Bronco and this guide here will show you how to replace the complete front disc brake assembly which is the rotor, the hub, bearings, calipers, and brake lines. Now you can use this guide on any Ford, Dodge, Chevy, and Jeep that has the Dana 44 front axle. The Dana 60 will be very similar and so will be the 35 and the Dana 27 as well. Here is the disc brake rotor with the hub assembly already assembled onto it. A new disc brake caliper, brake pads, brake line. These here are the bearings and the bearing seal. The tools required are pretty simple, just your standard ratchet, pry bar, screwdrivers. What you will need is a snap ring plier and the four prong spindle socket. Now the Dana 44 uses the four prong on the manual hubs. If you have automatic hubs, it'll be slightly different. The Dana 60 will also be different, but your local parts stores will have all of these in stock. All right, so now let's just get started. Okay, now the first thing I like to do is give all the lug nuts a good crack. Just loosen them up a little bit. Next, jack up your truck. You can put the jack stand underneath the pumpkin there. Now you can remove your wheel. down a piece of cardboard because it can get pretty messy here with some you know grease and brake fluid now for the fun stuff these allens here are a pretty odd size they are a three and a half allen which took me a little while to find but I made this little concoction here with a little mini ratchet you don't want it here on the lock you want it on free so make sure it's on free and the hub just slides right out. Now there's a Phillips head right here. Remove that. This is spring loaded so be careful. Once you remove this screw, this will pop out and hold the spring with it as well. Just like that. Next, there's going to be a little snap ring in here. It's kind of buried in all the grease in here. You might have to use a second pick to kind of help guide it out. There it is there. Now you can do this without the snap ring pliers, which I've done before, but it's really difficult. Open them up slowly and pull it off. Now you're going to use two picks and fish out the rest of the hub here. Now in here you're going to have the four pronged spindle nut. Now these can be on here pretty tight so you might need a breaker bar. And it's very important don't let this hub socket slip off, it might strip the teeth. And there's the first nut. Now you can see the washer in there. It's like a spacer. It's got a bunch of holes in it. So just kind of fish it out with both your picks. Just like that. All right, remove the last spindle nut. Now these are on there pretty tight. I'm using a breaker bar and they're really on there. You gotta hold it real good and just go to town. There it is. Now this one that goes on first, which is gonna be the last one you remove, it's a little slightly different. It has this little nipple sticking out of it. This is where the washer locks onto. See it right there? So this one goes on first when you wanna reassemble. Uh, this particular model has pins locking in the caliper. Some of them are bolted in, depending on the year. Some of them are pins. And what I found works really well with these pins is a quarter inch extension works really well. Now 
Now when you get them off, it's really nice that you can just hang them right here. Now with the brake caliper set aside, you can just remove the rotor now. It just pulls right out. And remove the last brake pad here. Right, now's your chance to clean up and inspect your spindle. If it's got deep grooves in it, I do recommend you replace it. It's pretty easy to replace. You just unbolt these here and it pops right out. This one here looks like it's in pretty good shape. I don't see any deep grooves. I'm gonna clean it up just a little bit. You don't have to get all fancy. We're not trying to win an award or anything. Just get some degreaser, or if you have brake cleaner, brake cleaner works really well. Cuts right through all this stuff. All right, so I think that's pretty good. Like I said, we're not trying to win any awards or anything like that. For this next step, we're gonna be removing the brake caliper and brake line. And what I like to do is fill up the master cylinder because you are going to leak a little bit of brake fluid. The reason why you really want to top this up is because if your brake fluid runs all the way dry, all four brakes are going to have to get blood. You're going to have to fill this up and then push air out of all of the brake lines. Now you are still going to have to bleed the front two brakes since we are replacing the lines and the calipers. And I'll show you a quick trick on how we do that. Well, this is the front driver, so it's going to have two brake lines going to it. The master cylinder comes from the back here. I can feel it. comes in and feeds here. And then this one routes to the passenger side. So the front brake hose will actually have two fittings on it. Now this one seems a little loose because it is missing the clip that goes on the inside of here. Now, the only way to remove and install this clip is to remove the brake line first. That brake line has to be removed, then this clip clips on, then the brake line attaches. So this here is where the inner brake line shows. It's an 11 millimeter. Just loosen it up like that. And whoever did this last time, again, did not install that clip. It's important to ha have that clip installed, so we will install that. There, brake line is out. Next, remove this brake line here. and pull out the old brake line with the caliper. So you're gonna need this bolt here off the old caliper and brake line. It's got a hole in it to have the uh, brake fluid flow right through it. There are two crush washers. One goes here, and then you install the brake line on top of the first crush washer, and the second crush washer goes there, and then the bolt. Give it a nice torque down. Now when you go and install your brake line through the frame here, you have to install this clip. And since it wasn't on the truck, I had to go and buy these. Uh, again, they have them at the local auto parts stores. This is a doorman piece, but it's pretty factory looking. So it just slides in right here and locks in the brake line. Just like that. Remove your rag and install the brake line. Make sure it goes all the way in and you don't tighten it in crooked. It has to be nice and flush. And then tighten it down. Now chances are you got some brake fluid kind of a little bit of everywhere. Brake fluid is really corrosive. I like to just spray some degreaser on the frame rails here everywhere that it came in contact with and then just wipe it down and dry up any excess brake fluid otherwise it'll strip the uh, paint off the frame and you might it might lead to rust. Make sure you go inside this rail right here where it was dripping. And then I like to finish it up with some WD-40. Just spray some WD-40 in here Kind of give it like a finished look and gives it some protectant. When you buy the rotor with hub combo, the race for the bearing comes pre-installed. All you have to do is pop in the bearing. Now I will be using Timken bearings. They do not come pre-greased. I like to get just some multi-purpose grease good for bearings. Get a dab like that, put it here in my palm, and you will actually see as you work it into it, you'll see the grease going through the bearing. And then just work all along the bearing. Make sure grease comes out of the bearing around the whole bearing. 
Make sure you don't get any grease on the rotor surfaces. If you do, you can just wipe it down with some degreaser. Pop in the bearing here in the rear. Now for the bearing seal, you're going to want to tap around the edges. Do not tap on this metal part here where the rubber holds. If that gets distorted, it won't seal very good. New rotors always come with an anti-rust coating on them. So what you're going to want to do is get some degreaser, maybe even some brake cleaner. That works really well and then just rub off that coating. These are new old stock rotors, so they have a little bit of pitting in there from some surface rust that was on there from a while ago. I really like to use original parts. Very important, do not use a cheap rotor. If you can't find an original Chevy or Ford rotor, I've noticed that the Bosch rotors are very nice. They're very quiet. If you get a cheap rotor, they're gonna really squeak. They're gonna squeak and squeal. Even if you get premium pads, they just dig into the rotors and cause grooves. So get yourself a good quality rotor uh, with the hub. It saves you a lot of time. Now it's the front bearing that kind of holds this rotor into place along with that first spindle nut. So that bearing is going to go in there just like this with the small end forward, the big end facing outward. Uh, but we're going to pre-grease it first. And that is a nice pre-greased bearing. Slide your bearing in. Time to put on the spindle nut. Remember, use the one that's got the little nipple sticking out of it. Put that nipple facing outward. I found it easier to just put it on the socket and then guide it on. You're gonna need to use a torque wrench and torque it down to 50 foot-pounds. There it is. Then spin the hub a few times. Now you want to back it off a full 90 degrees. Like that. And then the last step, you have to torque it down to 15 foot-pounds just to snug up against those bearings. Right there. Now install this spacer right here. Keep in mind it's got a groove, so line up that groove and the pin that's coming out of that nut. This is the last spindle nut here, it doesn't matter which way you put it on. Now this is the one that has to be tightened on really well. I've heard 160 to 180. I'm going to go ahead and put it on 160. There it is. Now it's time to put on the brake pads and caliper. Grab the caliper, and then this pad installs onto the caliper. Slide the caliper on, just like that. The new caliper usually comes with new pins. Just line up the top one, just like that. Don't install it all the way. Just get it to where it's secured, and then install the bottom one. And then go to town on the top one. Now I like to just put in some new grease on these splines. Just give them a little bit. Nothing excessive. Now this is the next part that goes in here. Slides in just like this. Install this larger snap ring first. You might actually have to pull out the axle. Sometimes the axle pushes itself in, so make sure you pull it out and you have enough space here. Get your snap ring. Pliers. Open it up. Next, install your spring and this sprocket, very important, make sure you install it this way with these gears recessed in, not this way. It will not fully engage into four-wheel drive if you don't have it installed correctly. So remember, gears recessed inward. See how it goes in all the way like that? That's what you need. Install your screw. And lastly, install your hub locker. Alright guys, so now I'm going to show you how I actually bleed my brakes. I just get an empty water bottle like this, and I fill it up a little bit with some fresh clean brake fluid. Right about that much there. Then I insert this hose, make sure it goes all the way to the bottom of the water bottle. I recommend maybe something a little wider, it doesn't have to be clear. Just for this demonstration, I'm going to show you how this works. And that's why I chose a clear, thin water bottle, but for more stabilization, Maybe get something that's a little bit wider at the bottom. 
if you're gonna be doing this by yourself. Now your new caliper is probably gonna have a cap on the bleed screw. So just remove that cap very carefully. You're gonna probably wanna reuse it. Next, insert the hose into the bleed screw. Make sure it's inserted all the way. And also make sure that the hose is all the way at the bottom of the brake fluid that's in this water bottle here. Next, loosen up the brake bleed screw. Make sure it's just a little loose like that. Push on the brake pedal. Push it all the way down. Let all the air come out. You can see gravity is actually working right now. You can see the air bubbles already coming out in the brake fluid here. And now when the pedal goes back up, it's just going to suck in. Instead of air, it will suck in the fluid that's inside. So go ahead and press the brake pedal all the way down. There, pedals all the way down. Did you see all that air? Now go up. Down again. Up. Now repeat this process as many times as it takes until there's no more air bubbles coming out. If your master cylinder went down all the way. Do the right rear first, then the right left, then the passenger, then the driver front. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. Now we're gonna tighten the line. And then remove the hose. If you only need to do the two front, just do the passenger side first. It's the furthest one away from the master cylinder. And then come and do the driver side. I've already done the passenger side. I'm wrapping up the driver side here. And now we're ready to put the tire back on. Remove the jack stand. All right, well there you have it guys. We completely rebuilt our front disc brakes. Everything's nice and new. Remember, use good quality parts. Motorcraft, AC, Delco, whatever's OEM for your car or truck. You're gonna be a lot happier if you use quality parts. Doing a big job like that, you don't want any little part to fail. If this video helped you guys, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.